Follow that, huh? Good morning, everybody. Well, first of all, let's start here. Let's start by giving uh, the provost and all the faculty here a huge round of applause. And, and also for the dean. The dean started here at UCI about the same time I moved to the US, so about four years ago, and I think has done an outstanding job connecting your university to the local and, frankly, national business community. So let's hear it for the dean. So this is a big responsibility. It's a big responsibility to stand up before all of you and give this commencement speech. I've been thinking long and hard about it, trying to work out what to say, where to start. I talked to many colleagues at work. In fact, some of my colleagues are here in the audience, so congratulations to the experienced members here. I talked to my family. I was still worrying about it this morning, and so as I came down to the Starbucks on campus, I found a few of you wearing your robes, went up and introduced myself to you to see if I could get any inspiration from you. I realized when I stood up here, though, and looked down on all of you, there was one word, one word that sprung to mind. That word's optimism. When I look at all of you, I'm hugely optimistic. Why am I optimistic? I'm optimistic because you represent the next generation of business leaders. The generation that can do so much more than just deliver shareholder value. You're the generation that can lead us through innovation, bring creativity. You're the generation that can truly make a difference to society on behalf of business. And that's something that fills me with optimism. And so as you start on this journey, I want you to take just a moment to look at the person to your left and the person to your right. That's great, good fun to watch that. See all your heads moving. Uh, but there was slightly more to it than just that. That person next to you might well be the next Jeff Bezos, the next Larry Page, the next Sheryl Sandberg. In fact, the person to your left or the person to your right might do so much more than that. So take a moment to connect with them. And as Eric said, do so much more than just text them or WhatsApp or Instagram. Please take a moment to stay in touch. This network that you've built here, this incredible institution, is one that will stay with you for the rest of your lives. Now, what you've achieved already deserves applause. It's incredible. You should be very proud. You really should. But it's just the beginning of your journey. And for you to make the optimism that I have really come to life, I thought I'd give you just a few pointers of advice. And so there are five. Just five straightforward things I hope you'll all remember as you go on your journey. You go on your journey to make a difference to society. So let's jump on in. Here we go. First thing, number one. You ready? You sure? Okay. Invest in a promising startup. Sounds easy, right? But this startup is going to be underfunded, underrecognized, and underestimated because the startup you need to invest in is you. Number one thing, invest in yourself. To realize your full potential, you need to do so much more than what you've achieved already. You need to continue the strive for education that you've developed, the love of learning I hope you've picked up here at the UCI. You need to look carefully at yourself, and as you start in your business careers, or continue your business careers, work out what you're good at, and frankly, what you're not so good at. And there will be some things that you're not so good at. I know it's hard to take today on your graduation day, but there'll be some things. Really, really use those strengths and get other people around you to help with the weaknesses. After you've done that, you will begin the process of fulfilling that optimism. So number one, invest in the promising startup. The second thing I want to tell you is this. Remember, the world's not going to stop spinning. Sounds a silly thing to say, right? Why do I tell you the world's not going to stop spinning? After all, you've graduated. You're on to that next stage of your lives. You're going to get yourself into a great role, an exciting job. You're going to be investing in your development, 
taking care of your weaknesses, and you're going to be on the way up. I'm absolutely confident in that. And then you're going to fail. It's going to happen. I hate to be the one that breaks it to all of you on this exciting day. And when you fail, remember the world won't stop spinning. It'll be okay. Go home. Do whatever it is you do to relax. Get up the next day. Go back to work and get after it again. Because if you don't fail, you've not tried hard enough. If you do not fail multiple times in your careers, you've not tried hard enough. Now, honestly, I've had my own share of failures. I thought I'd probably tell you about one. It makes it a bit more real. So I was at a company a couple of companies ago, and I was in a very public race, two-horse race, just two of us, for the CEO's job. As you can probably gather, I came a terrible second, rather publicly as well. What did I do? Well, I probably didn't heed my own advice that well. I went home, I sulked a bit, and then I did what every good executive does. I quit and got another job. Uh, that's not my advice. Of course, it turned out okay in the end. I realized actually I wasn't ready for the job. I realized it would have been a terrible move for me to take that job. But at the time, boy, did it seem like the world would stop spinning. Trust me, it won't. You'll be okay. The world won't stop spinning. But if you don't try hard enough, then you won't fail. And if you don't fail, you won't progress. So invest in a startup. Remember, the world won't stop spinning. And the third thing is to take time to celebrate. Now, it's your graduation day. I probably don't need to remind you to celebrate today. I think a few of you are going to go and celebrate today, and so you should. It's well deserved. But when you're in the world of work, you'll be hungry to progress. You'll be looking to really get on with your working life, to achieve, to deliver on that optimism that I've talked to you about, to make that difference to society. Take a moment to celebrate. When you get the promotion, take a moment to celebrate. When you achieve something truly successful, take a moment to celebrate. Symbolism matters. When I got the exciting job to move here to North America and run experience business, I had to think, what do I need to do to celebrate? Now, I have a young family, and so we came out here to visit, see what life would be like living in Southern California, and I took everybody to Disney. Why not? It seemed a good American thing to do. They had a wonderful time. It was my own little moment of celebration. That symbolism matters. It matters in how you visualize goals as well. My office, I have a very small model of a BMW. It's a BMW 3 Series, dates from the late 90s. Why do I have that model? I have that model because when I first started work, after graduating, I wanted to buy a car. I couldn't afford a car. The nearest I could get was a model of a car. You know, I never actually bought that car, but the model has stayed with me ever since. The model has stayed with me because it reminds me that I need to strive to achieve. The symbolism matters. The celebration matters. And so to all of you, take that moment today. Enjoy it. Celebrate it. Mark it. You deserve it. And then, when the next achievement comes, do the same again. Mark those moments with your friends, your families, your loved ones. So that's the first three points. You with me so far? Okay, here's the fourth one. This one's gonna sound a little bit odd. I call it the Friday rule. Never do a bad thing on a Friday. Okay, yeah, you, go with me, go with me please. There's a little bit of logic to all of this, right? Why never do a bad thing on a Friday? Okay, here we go. Now I'm lucky enough in my job to lead an amazing business and six and a half thousand fantastic employees. But by the time it gets to Friday afternoon, the things left on my to-do list, honestly, are probably the really difficult things to do, right? I've done the easy things on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the middle hard things on Thursday, and probably on Friday, it's just the really hard things that are left. Those hard things, 
normally involve difficult conversations with people. And I'm thinking, I want to go home for the weekend. I want to go enjoy my weekend with a clear mind. And so on Friday afternoons, if I did those things, they'd be pretty bad things to do. They're pretty difficult things to do. But here's how it goes. I call somebody in. We have a really difficult conversation. My list is clear. I go home. I see my wife, my kids, my friends. We have a lovely conversation. We have a lovely weekend together. I've forgotten all about those bad things. By the time it gets to Monday morning, I'm energized. I'm ready to go again. And off we go. Now, the person that came into my office on Friday afternoon that we had that tough conversation with. They go home. They can't get any closure. They worry Friday night. By Saturday, it's a reasonably big thing. By Sunday, it's a really big thing. And by Monday, they think they probably need to quit or they're going to be fired. They come back in to see me. I've forgotten all about it. They think they're about to get fired. Nobody knows what's going on. Never do a bad thing on a Friday. Do it on Monday. <laughs> Best piece of advice you're going to get, trust me. Now it's... Now you see what happens on Monday. I feel worse, but never mind. They feel so much better. They can come back in and see me in the afternoon. Hey, Craig, I'm sorry. I messed up. I'm going to fix it. Or... You were wrong, that was a bad piece of advice. Whatever it is, they get quick closure. Because as a leader, this is really what the Friday rule's about. As a leader, your job is to give people the leadership they need, not the leadership you want to give them. Friday afternoon is the leadership you want to give them. Monday morning is the leadership they need. Okay, and here's the final piece of advice. And as I've thought hard about this address to you today, this amazing group of people in this audience, your friends, your family, your loved ones that are here today, I couldn't leave it be without making some form of social commentary as relates to business. And so never, ever forget that our differences make us stronger. Our differences make us stronger. Look around the room. Look at this diverse group of people that you've studied with. Think about what you've learned from them. If you want to be a strong leader, as I hope you do, if you want to build a great business, as I hope you do, if you want to make a difference to society, as I believe you can, You'll need a diversity of perspectives. You'll need a diversity of perspectives. That diversity will help make sure that you make smarter decisions. It will help make sure that you create an environment where everyone feels welcome. Eric talked in his opening remarks about how I believe that that's why Experian continues to be a great company a great company that prides itself on innovation. When I joined the company, somebody asked me this question. Why do you want to lead? Why do you want to be in charge? And other than the obvious, I said, because I want to put something of myself back into the company. I want to create a culture that I can be proud of. And I described that one as a culture where we recognize that our differences make us stronger. It goes from the small to the really big. If you were to come into my office, there's no conference table. There's just a circle of chairs. A circle of chairs where we sit, we talk, we debate, we argue, we discuss, where everyone's point of view is respected, everyone's point of view is accepted, and then decisions are made. Now, it's a company. We don't always agree. But listening to the different points of view makes you stronger. But it goes to so much more than that. Have any of you ever seen the Humans of New York? I hope you have. It's a video blog. We did our own version. We called it the Humans of Experian. 
Couldn't think of a novel idea, so we copied somebody else's, but it's a great idea, really. We went to colleagues all over the business and said, hey, come tell us about your personal journey. And they shot two-minute videos. They're amazing. They cover everybody from Kareem, who talks about him and his family escaping Lebanon. From Thomas, who talks about his struggles with mental health issues and how his colleagues at work were there for him. We talk about Grace and how as a member of our pride community, she's been welcomed every day at work. We talk about Denise and her struggles as a, senior, as a single parent and her struggles with breast cancer and how the company, her friends and colleagues were there for her. Because after all, the people you work with, the people you study with, they're just like your friends and family in the audience. The differences make you stronger. Please remember that. Take it with you as you lead, as you run organizations, as you deliver on that optimism I talked about at the beginning, as you go out there and you make a difference in society. And so to recap, my five points for you, right? One, invest in yourselves. Two, remember the world won't stop spinning. It really won't, trust me. It'll feel really hard at the time, but I promise it'll keep spinning. Take time to celebrate. Enjoy today. You've earned it. You deserve it. Spend time with your friends, your family, your loved ones, and every stage in your career, mark it and celebrate. Number four, I hope you'll keep this one. It's a real favorite. Don't do a bad thing on a Friday. And above all, remember, our differences make us stronger. I want to congratulate each and every one of you on your amazing achievements. You've already come so far, but you've barely started. It's been my absolute honor and privilege to speak to you today. This is your time. Grasp it. I really can't wait to see what you do with it. Don't let me down. Deliver on my optimism. Good luck. Congratulations, Paul Mirage School Class of 2018. Go Eaters!